let's get started on reassembly. We've got the main shaft cleaned up. We've got the parts we're going to need over here, which is the first and second synchronizer assembly. And uh, you'll see we've got the uh, the spring and little uh, dogs or what do they call them? Uh, shifter plates. Okay. Got the shifter plate spring in. One end of the spring needs to be in one of these shifter plates right there. And the other spring needs to be in the same end of that shifter plate. In the, well, in that same shifter plate. So make sure you do that. The This hub will go towards the front. The uh, taper of the sleeve is to the back. So first step is to, well, here, let's back up a little bit. Let me show you what I'm using here. Uh, I'm using assembly goo for transmissions. Not using a huge amount of that, just where it's needed to stick stuff together or uh, stuff that is going to have a lot of metal, metal contact. I want to make sure it gets lubricated before we, you know, when it first starts going. And then also using the Redline MT90, uh, which I'm going to be using in the transmission. So, we'll put just a little bit of the transmission goo in there. just a little bit Oops, wrong place I'm there on the main shaft so basically we're just going to take this goes in from the, the tail shaft in slides on hopefully you can see this So, the synchronizer is on, the next step is to put the first speed bushing on and need to know, I'm, I always make sure I know which is the smoother side on the thrust washer so I know which way it goes. Put a little of the red line on here. That should slide on real nice. And then the first speed gear. We're going to put some red line in there where it goes on its sleeve. Also, there where it contacts the uh, blocking ring. And so I just take and put it in the thrust washer. So, first second synchronizer, first speed gear, thrust washer, and the next step is to put the bearing on. It's 
snap ring groove towards the front. So it's going to go on like this. But we're going to have to go to the uh, uh, the press to get that on. So we'll be back. So we've got the uh, main shaft and the bearing and the gears that we've installed uh, set up in the press. And I've got a piece of pipe. Actually, it's a piece of roll bar tubing, if I remember right. Uh, and it's been squared off on the lathe. And this end has the inside diamond has been cut down just enough so it slips over the fit area of the bearing on the shaft. So, uh, so let's go ahead and press this on. It shouldn't take much. Yeah, you can hammer it on, I guess. But I've got the press. Even though it takes a little while to set up, it uh, even though it takes a little while to set up, it's just a little safer. Uh, the groove in the bearing for the snap ring has to be towards the front. So there it is. Alright, we're back. So the next step is to install the clip right here after now that we press the bearing on. The book says to use the thickest clip that you can get in there. And I have determined that it looks like eight about ninety-six thousandths. And I I did have a a new old stock Scooter Baker. 155 96 thousand. The kit has one that's about 102 thousand, but it looks like it's going to be too tight. So we're going to try this one. I think this is the best fit. Make sure it gets down in that groove. And these are just sometimes these are a bear to get in. strong. They really are. quite not right. that's good I don't think that 102,000 would have fit all right so that's in the next step is to get this bl other blocking ring on. Make sure the notches line up with the little keys or dogs or whatever you want to call them. Uh, shifter plates is what the, the book calls them. Let's get you focused a little better here. Okay. And... All the second speed gear, synchronizer, and 
the synchronizer hub. So we've got this new second speed gear. And it goes in. There's the there's the needle thrust. I'm not gonna put it on yet. Make sure this is lubed up good. Put a little of that fancy stuff on there. Alright. And then the thrust bearing goes on. Sorry. Sorry. And this gear goes on as with a thrust. There. Let's get you up. And then we put on the synchronizer assembly. And the tapered portion right here goes towards the front. And make sure you line up the shifter plates with the locking ring. There. Now, we've got another, another seat clip. Goes up right in here. And I've chosen two of them. One's 87 thousandths and one's a little more than that. You gotta, you need some clearance. Uh, how much? 10 to 15 thousandths clearance. So, I'm going to go, let me make sure I got the right one here. Get you back down. I'm going to try the 87,000s first. I haven't put it together and checked it first and took it apart, so that's 90. And that's about eighty-seven and a half. So I'm gonna try the eighty-seven and a half and see what clearance we got and we'll go from there. Snap ring pliers. Oop. Let's get you up here. All right. How about that? Let's see if I can hold this. see that well. Alright, the book says between the third speed gear, measure between the third speed gear and thrust bearing will be 10 to 15 thousandths. Alright, let's turn it this way. Get a bit. 
better view of this, hopefully. So. There is a little clearance there. So let's clean off my hands. Get the feeler gauge out. And we'll start at 10 and work our way up. Between these gloves and this red line lube, it's not the easiest thing to get these apart. All right. Looks like we definitely have 10. So, what do you think? We There's 13. Let's try 13. And we've got 13. Hmm. We may have a little too much. Okay, well, I've got right at about 15. So the question is, do I want to try this other? That'll cut it down a little bit. I guess I will. Let's see if we can get this off. Get you back up again. See, if I would have fitted this, checked it, and took it apart, then you'd have said, boy, he's good. But I didn't do that. So there's that. So let's see what we got. Hopefully we're going to have like about 12. So let's get you back down. them off. Well, we got 12. Try 13. This may not be seated, so I may try hitting it with a dead blow hammer. All right, looks like 
going to end up with 13. So I am going to pop it with a dead blow hammer. pieces of rubber. Maybe it's time for a new one. Yeah, we're at we're at 13, so we're going to stay there. I, that's that's a good intermediate. I didn't like being at the limit, so especially since I got oil and everything in it. All right, so. The next step is to install the bearing retainer. Let's get you on where you can see here. Next step is to install the bearing retainer onto the bearing. So for that, we're going to have to go back to the press, I think. So let's go get it set up. All right, we're back, and as you can see, the uh, re bearing retainer plate is on. Uh, what I did is I started out with just getting the bearing retainer and snap ring started over the bearing, but it's a very light press fit. I used my dead blow hammer and once I had it started, made sure that the snap ring, you know, opened it up so it would slide around the bearing. Make sure it wasn't, it was free on the bearing and I just tapped it with my dead blow hammer. Uh, come on. There. Tapped it with my dead blow hammer. And a little more than that, but uh, I got it on, so I didn't need to use the press. But we will need to use the press to get the speedometer gear on. And the speedometer gear has to be get you down here. Speedometer gear has to be pressed on this shaft down to here, and there's a specific measurement from the speedometer gear to the face of this plate, the bearing retainer, that you got to maintain, or no more than that. All right, so we've got the bearing retainer on. The next step is to put the reverse slider gear on. This is a the old stock reverse slider I got at York years ago. And uh, so that needs to go on. And I've cleaned it up. Basically, we're just going to put some uh, this goo on it to lubricate the splines initially. Check the book here on something. Make sure I know how it, which way it faces. Okay, that's what I thought. Before we do that, let's. Uh, you to where you can see what I'm doing and put some oil on here on this bearing. Now we'll slide the reverse slider on. Next 
next is to press the speedometer gear on. We'll go to the press for that. All right. No picture at the press. And the reason being, what I did when I pressed these on before, uh, they didn't press on real smooth. I'd have to put a good bit of pressure and it would jump. Uh, so I decided to heat it up. Well, it heated up enough. It's not that much of an interference fit. So it heated up enough that I was able to slide it over the slightly raised area where it sits. And so I slid it over there. And then it was just a little too far this way. So I went ahead and used my puller tool, set it up, and pulled it back just enough. And so right now it's a 30 second less than the dimension in the book. And the dimension in the book is 4 and 13 sixteenths, so it's a 30 second less. They said that you don't want it more than that, but it can be slightly less. So uh, that's what I did. So. That was easier than the press, uh, heated up in the toaster oven to 400 degrees. So, that's on. I'm glad of that. So, it's time to move on here.